A Stars Gem 12 is very impressive. Not often I get pleasantly surprised by a mini that comes across my desk, but this is just one of those times. The Gem 12 tries to cater to many different usage cases, and this usually spells doom. And despite the odds, it succeeds by doing many things right. There's a lot to go over, and we'll get into it right after this message. Ease Us To Do Backup Home is an award-winning backup solution to keep your data safe. Backup, clone, upgrade, or transfer your system easily, and protect it from ransomware. To Do Backup Home even supports backing up to the cloud. Trial it for free with a link in the video description. A Stars Gem 12 may target those wanting to use an external graphics enclosure with their mini PC, but it would be a mistake to ignore it if that doesn't interest you one bit, as it's a really good performing mini PC in its own right. The design is pretty slick. It definitely has some Intel NUC influence and looks the part. The outer shell is metal with plastic top and bottom covers. It's solid all around and I'm happy with its build quality. A Stars Gem 12 is available in a few CPU flavors, but this review unit courtesy of Geek Buying comes with AMD's Ryzen 6900HX, a popular 8 core 16 thread processor with Radeon 680M graphics. That really helped AMD dominate in the mobile space with its far superior integrated graphics when it released. Geek Buying has the Gem 12 for US$479 US for the 16GB memory, 512GB storage configuration with free shipping to most countries. But they've provided me with a coupon bringing it down to 459 which will be linked in the video description. Double your memory and storage for an extra US$100. The Gem 12 comes with a compact 120W power supply which plugs straight into the wall. Haven't seen that in a while. Usually the power brick is separated with another power cord. It's rare to find a spare heatsink or thermal pad for a second storage drive included, but it's here along with a HDMI cord and monitor mount. The front has the USB 4 and Oculink port. Both of the USB 3 are 10 gigabit. A-Star says that the USB-C on the back used to power the Mini with the included power supply is a full featured port supporting power and display. I couldn't get it to power on with my 75W USB-C monitor, so I couldn't test it. But when I plugged it into the USB 4 port, it did power on and display briefly before turning off. You're going to need a 100W USB-C to handle this Mini. Anyway, apparently that port together with the USB 4 HDMI and DisplayPort allows you to run four displays simultaneously. There's also dual 2.5 gigabit LAN ports and USB 2 for the mouse and keyboard. A pretty stellar selection for the asking price. Okay, let's open her up. This one has glued on rubber feet. I thought we were past this. And on top of that, these are glued on real tight. Anyway, once they're out, four screws to remove, then lightly lift the lid as the Wi-Fi and lower fan cable are connected to it. Inside you'll find DDR5 5600 is included, which is interesting as 4800 is advertised. It also comes with dual M.2 Gen 4 NVMe slots. Underneath the one that's occupied is the M.2 wireless card. Speaking of wireless, I tested the range of this mini using my Bluetooth audio speaker, and the Gem 12 managed to keep uninterrupted audio playback at just over 3 meters or 10 feet with a wall in between. Not a great result. The Gem 12 comes with Windows 11 Pro pre-installed and there was no malware found when I scanned the drive. The latest Ubuntu works fine straight off a of USB. Okay then, it's benchmark time. AMD's Ryzen 6000 series wasn't impressive in single core, but this one at least performs like a 6900HX should. The multi-core, it also does well. If you change the power profile from balance to performance in the BIOS, you can get a slight increase of 4%. Geekbench on the other hand showed no improvement with a higher performance profile. The video encoding test for the Gem 12 shows there is an improvement with performance mode and with the balance profile again around what the 6900HX should be doing. So all good here and the same with AV1. Oh, and I should point out, AMD's 6000 series doesn't have an AV1 hardware encoding feature. One thing I did notice during my testing is a slight drop in graphics score over the other 6900HX Mini I've tested. Just over 4% lower in DX11. Switching to performance mode didn't improve the score. 
I can only speculate it's something to do with the RAM, which might have worse timings at 4800 than the other one tested. Luckily, you can easily overclock the memory on the Gem 12. I didn't have time to mess around, so I just went with 5600 MHz, which helps the Gem 12 come out on top. A 6% gain over 4800. The DX12 graphics benchmark shows the same story. 4% behind, and a 6% jump when setting memory speed to 5600. Here's the 3D Mark Steel Nomad benchmark, which 3D Mark says will be the go-to test replacing Time Spy, since it has a more modern feature set, and that's why I've started to include it. The Gen 4 SSD inside has decent sequential read speed, but the write speed is half that and below Gen 3's maximum. The 1TB model should definitely have better write speeds. This is normally the time where I'd show you a bunch of games running on this Mini's integrated graphics, but I thought we'd do something different since this Mini has an eGPU focus. If you're interested in gaming performance with the integrated graphics, check out my B-Link Sir 6 review, which I'll link at the end of this video. That being said, I will do one integrated graphics test to make sure Secure Boot works properly, as it's a requirement for Valorant and it's performing as expected. Alright, so the next set of games are all using an RTX 3070 graphics card externally on the USB 4 and Oculink ports to see how differently they perform. Oh, and just be aware, the Mini must be turned off when plugging in the Oculink cable to avoid damaging the board. It's not hot swappable at any time like a USB 4 eGPU. But Oculink has other benefits. It just works, while USB 4 can be a pain in the ass to get functioning. With Oculink, just install the graphics driver after plugging it in. Easy. But the biggest win is that Oculink has higher bandwidth than USB 4. 64 gigabits per second compared to 40. So you're going to see better performance. How much? I'll do a side by side comparison shortly. So you may be wondering, what am I using for Oculink? Well, I bought the Ocu P4 V2 off AliExpress, which comes with everything you need to get started. The only thing you need to do is assemble it by screwing it together and add a graphics card and power supply to make your Oculink eGPU. You can find my affiliate link to the Ocu P4 V2 in the video description. It works great. Okay, so let's get to it. The RTX 3070 Oculink versus USB 4. Fight! Let's climb. And it's not much of a fight really, more of a straight knockout. The extra bandwidth does wonders for Oculink in most cases. GTA 5 had the smallest improvement, but the frame rate was much smoother with less drops than USB 4. Clearly, Oculink is the best external graphics option, and the Gem 12 allows me to show a direct comparison, which is great. Alright, next up is video editing using the integrated GPU. My 4K project runs pretty well with the 6900HX, frames aren't dropped, but when the CPU spikes scrubbing across the timeline, there is a bit of a delay before the video starts playing. As always, Intel is faster in this test, so if you're only video editing, an Intel Mini is recommended. The Gem 12 BIOS has pretty much everything you need in one spot. Go to Advanced, and then Power Configuration to find the most common requested features. You can tweak things further in the AMD CBS options, and the memory can be overclocked there as well. The Gem 12's idle power draw is average. The maximum depends on the power mode you use, and is nothing out of the ordinary. The max CPU temp is kept down either way. What also made me happy is that the Gem 12 is not as loud as most minis. While idle noise level isn't impressive due to the dual fan design, the load fan noise is very impressive, especially on balance mode, and definitely my recommendation. 
A slight increase in multi-core CPU performance isn't worth the higher fan noise and power draw. I know I say this a lot, but the diminishing returns are definitely in effect. Having a fan and heatsink for the storage does wonders, and the SSD stays cool, no problem. Alright, so let's wrap this up. The AU Star Gem 12 has an Oculink port and a great set of ports in general. Fan noise is impressively low under load using balance mode. The BIOS allows for memory overclocking. There are two Gen 4 NVMe drives which are unaffected by the Oculink port. It's just a really well designed mini PC by Tianbei and gets most things right. Although the glued on rubber feet do suck for opening it and wireless range is unimpressive. When I started testing the AU Star Gem 12, I thought maybe at best it would just cater to those wanting a mini with an Oculink port. But I came away impressed that this mini PC is a good choice for any usage case. And so, it's one of the rare times I'm going to give a recommendation. Well done Tianbei on the design of the Gem 12. It impresses in many ways, and is a fine mini PC. If you're interested, affiliate links are down in the video description and really help to keep this channel going. Oh, and as mentioned before, if you wanted to check out the integrated graphics performance of the 6900HX, you can find that video linked in the top right corner. Cheers!